Hello, in today's lesson, lesson 2.6, our topic is multiply using expanded form. And we're on page 67 of your math book. All right, so let's get started. So our essential question for today is, how can you use expanded form to multiply a multi-digit number by a one-digit number? So <clears throat> example one, use expanded form. And we see that we have five times 143. So what is 143 in expanded form? Well, we have 100, we have four tens, and we have three ones. And we learned that the sum of a number multiplied by another number is the same as multiplying that number by each of the add-ins and then adding the products together. So that's why we have 5 times 100, 5 times 100, 5 times 40, and 5 times 3. Okay. So we're multiplying the 5 by each of the place values. And so step 1, save the model. So we have 5 times 100. Which is 500. Step two would be five times 40. And we know five times four is 20. And we're going to put the zero from the four tens. And then we're going to multiply the three ones. So five times three is 15. So then we need to add the three products we got. We have 500, 215. So add the partial products. Five and zero ones is five. One and zero tens is one. Five and two hundreds is seven. So five times 143 is 715. <clears throat> Is your answer reasonable? There's a question down here. Is our answer reasonable? Let's see. Well, 5 times 100 is 500, and 5 times 200 is 1,000. So our answer should be between 500 and 1,000, and it is. So that's reasonable. All right, 2.7, uh, 2.6 on page 68. So we're going to continue to use expanded form in number 2. And the gift shop at the animal park orders three boxes of toy animals. Each box has 1,250 toy animals. How many toy animals does the shop order? So three times 1,250. So we're going to break 1,250 into expanded form. And then we're going to apply the distributed property. So three is going to be multiplied by 1,000. two hundreds, and five tens. I don't need a zero because there are no zeros. So then where you know that we're going to go three times one thousand, three times two hundred, and three times fifty. So what is that? Three times one thousand is three thousand plus 3 times 200 is 600, plus 3 times 50. I know 3 times 5 is 15. I'm going to put the 0 from the 10s, so 150. So then we can line up our numbers. I have 3,000. My next digit, my next number is 600. And I'm going to finish with 150. So these are the partial products we got from using the distributor property. So no ones. There are five tens. There are seven hundreds. And there are three thousands. So they ordered 3,750 animals. Okay, easy enough, right? 
Okay, number four. Uh, number one under share and show. Four times 213. And I see the expanded form here is 200, 110, and three ones. And I see that we're multiplying by four in each of these. So let's break 213 into its place value. So all I did was rewrite 200s, 110, and three ones. Now we're going to use the distributive property and multiply the four by each of those digits. So, so four times 200, four times 10, and four times three. So four times 200, four times 10, four times three. Now we're going to have partial products. Four times 200 is 800. Four times 10 is 40. And four times three is 12. So we're going to add these together. Okay, I've made sure I've lined up my place values starting with the ones. I have two ones. I have five tens. And I have eight hundreds. So 852. Record the product. Use expanded form to help. Number two. <clears throat> so we can draw our model. We're going to have 50 and 9. So that's 59. I'm sorry, I drew that wrong. I want to be consistent. I put it inside the box so we need to go on the outside. And then we have the four. So we're going to have four times 59 equals four times 50 plus nine. So what did we do so far? We rewrote the problem and we broke apart the 59 as 50 plus 9. We're now going to use the distributive property and multiply both of our add ins by 4. 4 times 5, 4 times 50 is 200, and 4 times 9 is 36. Well, we can, we can. Do this one basically in our head. 200 plus 36 is just going to be 236. So that's our answer, 236. Number three. So again, let's use a model. So we know that the top one, we have three place values this time. And we're going to have 200, eight tens, and eight ones. And that's all multiplied by 3. So we're doing 3 times 288, which is the same as saying 3 times the sum of 200 plus 80 plus 8. Okay, all we did was write 200s, 80s, and the 8 ones. And now we're going to use the distributive property. And multiply each of the add ins by three. Three times 200 is 600. Three times 80 is 240. Eight times three is 24. Flip the zero from the tens. Plus eight times three, 24. Okay, we're going to add these up, add these partial products. Four ones, six tens, eight hundreds, eight hundred sixty-four. Okay, page 69, number one. Number four, I'm sorry. Record the product, use expanded form to help. Okay, four times 21. So I'm going to have 20 and 1, and we're going to multiply by 4. So expanded form would be 4 
times 21 is the same as 4 times the sum of 20 plus 1. So use the distributive property. It would be 4 times 20 plus 4 times 1. So we're going to multiply the 4 by each of the add-ins in our sum. So 4 times 20 is 80. 4 times 1 is 4. I can do that in my head. 80 plus 4, 84. 6 times 35. I have 30 and 5. And so that would be the model for it. Writing it in expanded form. 6 times the sum of 30 plus 5. I'm going to multiply the 6 by each of the add-ins. So 6 times 30 plus 6 times 5. 6 times 30, well 6 times 3 is 18, but the 0 from the 10. 6 times 5 is 30, so now we can add up our partial products. Zero ones, 11 tens, which I will rename or regroup as one 100 and one 10. We get 210. Number five. <clears throat> 470 and nine times five. So five times 400. 5 times 70, 5 times 9. So all the model is is representing expanded notation, expanded form. So I'm going to break 479 into this place value digits. Okay, so we get 400 plus 70 plus 9. And now we want to multiply the 5 by each of the add-ins. So 5 times 400 plus 5 times 70 plus 5 times 9. All right, 5 times 400. 5 times 4 is 20. And I'll put the two zeros of the 400. 5 times 7 is 35. And I'll put the zero from the 70 plus 45. So we're going to add 2,000 plus 350 plus 45. We'll get five ones, nine tens, three hundreds, and two thousands. Okay, number seven. So this time we're going to have four boxes, right? Because we have four place value digits. Our box, and we're going to have 4,121. Four thousands, one hundred twenty one. And all of those will be multiplied by the six. So if we write that out, <clears throat> so that's our original problem. And we're going to rewrite the 4,021, 121 is 4,000 plus 100 plus 20 plus 1. So it's going to be 6 times 4,000 plus 6 times 100 plus 6 times 20 plus 6 times 1. Okay, 6 times 4 is 24, so 24,000. 6 times 100 is 600. 6 times 20 is 120 and 6. So we're going to have 6, 2, 7, 4, 24,726. Number eight. 
A jeweler has 36 inches of silver chain. She needs five times as much as that to make some necklaces. How much silver chain, chain does the jeweler need to make her necklaces? Well, okay, so what do I need? I need the 36 inches, and I need to know five times as much. So my problem would be five times 36. That's the model of that problem. Five times 30 plus five times six. Five times 36 is the same as saying five times the sum of 30 plus six. This is a distributive property to find the partial products. Five times 30 plus five times six. Five times 30 is 150. Five times 30 is 15 with the zero of the 10. And five times six is 30. So we can add that together, we get 180. She's gonna need 180 inches of silver. Gretchen, number nine, Gretchen walks her dog three times a day. Each time she walks the dog, she walks 1,760 yards. How many yards does she walk her dog in one day? Three times a day, 1,760 yards each time. So that would be the three times, each time 1,760 1, yards. So if I was drawing a, a model to represent this, it would be Three times one thousand times seventy times sixty. So three times one thousand seven hundred sixty is the same as saying three times the sum of one thousand plus seven hundred plus sixty. So it's going to be three times each of the atoms. 3 times 1,000 plus 3 times 700 plus 3 times 60. So 3,000. 3 times 700 is, 3 times 7 is 21. Add the two zeros, 2,100. And 3 times 60 is 180. Add these together, 3,000, 2,100, 180. So 5,280 yards. Per day. Number 10, which expression could you write to show how to multiply 9 times 856 using place value and expanded form? <clears throat> so, 9 times 856 is the same as saying 9 times 800 plus 50 plus 6. Which is equal to 9 times 800 plus 9 times 50 plus 9 times 6. Number 11, Jennifer bought four packages of tax. Four packages of tax. There are 48 tax in a package. She used 160 of the tax. How many tax does she have left? Okay, so I know I have subtraction here. And I know I need to do actually do multiplication too because I have to figure out how many total tax she had to start with. So 4 times 48, I know is the same as 4 times 40 plus 4 times 8. Okay, so you 
broke up to 48 as 40 plus 8. And we wrote it using the shared property. 4 times 40 is 160. 4 times 8 is 32. 2 ones, 0 ones is 2 ones. 3 tens, 6 tens is 9 tens. So 192 tax. All right, so she bought 192 tax. She used 160. So 192, take away 160. She has 32 tax left. So explaining it, she bought... One hundred and ninety two tax and used one hundred and sixty. So one hundred and ninety two take away one hundred and sixty equals thirty two tax left. The first step we did, we multiplied to figure out how many tax she bought. She bought four packages of forty eight, which is equal to one hundred and ninety two. We know that she used 160 of them to put up the posters. So we're going to subtract how many tax we had from how many she used uh, with how many she used to give you 32 tax left. Go on to page 70. Okay, use the table for numbers 12 and 13. Okay, so let's make sure we understand the table. Saco Nursery Plant Sale. And so we have trees. Trees are going to be in this column. And they have a flowering cherry tree, an Italian cypress tree, a Muscogee crepe myrtle tree, and the royal empress, empress tree. These are the regular prices for each of those trees. And then when you buy four or more, they'll charge you that amount. So if you buy four or more, you get a discount on each of those trees. So what's the total cost of three Italian cypress trees? Okay, do I get the discounted price for that? No, because I'm only buying three. So it's going to be three times 79, which is the same as three times the sum of 70 plus 9, which would be three times 70 plus three times 9. 3 times 70 is 210. 3 times 9 is 27. So that would be $237. Tanya says that the difference in the cost of four flowering cherry trees and four Muscogee crepe myrtles is $80. Is she correct? Well, I'm going to show you two different ways to solve this type of problem. So one is figuring out how much each of them costs and subtracting them. So four times 59 and four times 39. So I'm figuring out how much each of the trees cost. So four times 59 is the same as four times 50. Plus four times nine. The Muscogee crepe myrtles is the same as saying four times thirty plus four times nine. So the cherry trees, two hundred plus thirty six, two hundred thirty six dollars, and the other one is one twenty plus thirty six. Four times thirty is one twenty. Four times nine is thirty six. That would be a total of 156. So that would be zero. So $80. The other way you can solve that type of problem is just what is the difference between one of those trees? And so the flowering cherry tree costs $59. The Muscogee crepe myrtle costs $39. So there's a difference of $20 for every tree. 20 times 4, $80. So there's that less work in this one if you find the difference for one tree. Okay, but now is she right? So it is, it is $80.
But you might have, maybe she overlooked this idea of four because it says if you buy four, you pay this price, not this price. So that's a whole different thing. So in that case, we have the cherry tree is $51. And the Muscogee crepe, crepe myrtle uh, tree is $34. But what's the difference between them? Well, I can't take four from one. So I regroup the five tens as four tens and one ten and ten ones. Eleven take away four is seven. Four take away three is one ten. So 17 times 4. Well, 4 times 10 plus 4 times 7. 40 plus 28. So, no, she's not correct. No. She should have used the discounted price. So she should only spend sixty there should have only been a difference of sixty-eight dollars between the two to, between the two trees if she's getting the discounted price. Um, what is the greatest possible product of a two-digit number and a one-digit number? Okay, well what's the biggest two-digit number? Ninety-nine, right? What's the biggest one digit number? Nine. Okay. So nine times nine, nine. I can rewrite that around, right? I can switch that around. Community property. That's the same thing, right? We agree. Okay. So now I can go nine times the sum of 90 plus nine, which is the same as saying nine times 90 plus nine times nine. And if I don't know what 9 times 9 is, I should. Okay, I should just know that multiplication fact. I'm in fourth grade, so that should be something we know off the top of our head. But if I did it, I'd go 9 times 10. And 9 times 10 is 90. And if I take away 9, that would be 81. So I know that 9 times 90 would be 810. Plus... 9 times 9, which is 81, we would get 891. Okay. Explain how you know. Well, basically, the largest two-digit two number is 99, and the largest one-digit number is 9. So 99 times 9 is 891. And finally, number 15. <clears throat> Multiply 5 times 381 using place value and expanded form. Select a number from each box to complete the expression. So we're going to break up 381 into expanded form and then multiply each of those add-ins by five. So five times what? Five times 300 plus five times 80, not eight, 80, because we're in the tens place, times five times one, because we're in the ones place. Okay, so, that's it for today's lesson on using expanded form and place value to solve multiplication problems. Uh, so until tomorrow, may the numbers always be in your favor.